good afternoon friends <coughs> you have to bear with me my little boy twice affected but now it is better i'm sure that uh, you will feel that this is some sponsored topic still it is going to be more informative and i'm sure that it is going to be interesting also of course maybe some more new information regarding severe combined immunodeficiency and that to type of adeno dmns deficiency let me start with the case which i came across almost 15 years back that was 12 months old child from maharan <coughs> for frequency of stool 8 to 10 times per day which was loose sticky on and off recurrent fever cough and breathlessness that means respiratory symptoms since 4 months of age poor appetite not gaining weight that was failure to hide failure to thrive and distension of the abdomen which was going on since few months hospitalized for almost four times before coming to us at various ages you can see that four months of for diarrhea nine months again for pneumonia 10 months which was diagnosed as septicemia diarrhea and lactose intolerance cti and even before referring to us 10 days back for fever cough and diarrhea these were the problems or the symptoms in family history nothing much but yes one eight months old male child died due to almost similar symptoms this was full term vacuum delivery birth weight you can see that 3 kg that means it was good development almost normal except gross motor probably maybe the part of the illness only breastfed child and still these problems were going on of course vaccinated for age without any issue that means some problematic immunodeficiency we can safely say probably they were absent of course mother had one mtp at two months amenorrhea investigations before coming to us which were performed showing that hemoglobin low mild to moderate low count only once some dc was available but within normal limits platelets were normal crp was raised mild enzymatic hepatic enzyme reaction and albumin was low somebody even investigated before referring to us that mento was negative immunoglobulins we can see that all the three almost low hiv was negative sonography showed mild hepatomegaly of course chest x ray was showing the pneumonia almost every time and now we understand that treated with the multiple antibiotics that was the era of empirical anti anti tuberculosis therapy and therefore it was also given for complete 4 to 6 months when we examine we can see that weight was significantly low head was affected length of course that means as a whole growth was affected falling in the criteria of failure to thrive fortunately vitals were normal failure to thrive significant pallor oral thrush was obvious pyoderma was noted even on examination perineal excoriation which was interpreted as lactose intolerance but it was with a fungal infection and generalized hypotonia may be the part of this malnutrition or even the generalized weakness <clears throat> what we try to understand there is a non consanguineous parents antenatal perinatal there was no any insult failure to thrive sorry before that full term baby birth weight was 3 kg breastfed development only gross motor recurrent gi tract and lower respiratory problems no tuberculous contact vaccinated failure to thrive pallor oral thrush excoriation no clubbing no organomegaly no lymphadenopathy investigation showed anemia count either normal or low platelets were normal crp was raised mild enzymatic reaction albumin was low with the part of nutrition immunoglobulins were found decrease mento test was negative hiv negative 
and even the imagination does not show much and therefore we thought of that probably it may be the case of cystic fibrosis or primary immunodeficiency disorder. Probably this was almost 12 years back and I was very keen for the cystic fibrosis because we came across many cases. Therefore I refer to Dr. Shushil Kabra in the Ames. You can see the note even how nicely some resident has written. They also thought of the same DD, the cystic fibrosis, immunodeficiency or GRD. They went with sweat chloride test and Dr. Kabra called me that forget regarding the cystic fibrosis, it is not there. Then patient parents came back. I said now I go in the another direction and that is to Mokesh Desai in J ba I will say Baria Hospital. There was work that was done. You can see the flow cytometry of the T cells. Almost every T cell component was affected. It was low. And diagnosis was quite obvious, which was talked to me that severe combined immunodeficiency disorder. Probably this was the first ski for me 15 years back. Later on, we had the two more cases, almost three to four months age. Presentation almost same, recurrent diarrhea, pneumonia, failure to thrive, fungal infection. In one child, even the tonsils were absent. We can see these lymphocyte subset, almost every site was affected. Immunoglobulins were low or either disarranged. Ultimately, both of them were diagnosed as severe combined immunodeficiency. Unfortunately, nothing was specific available and we lost all the three children with the diagnosis of ski. One fourth one, if I, I recollected and if I talked to some of my friends yesterday, we had some BCGOSIS almost 15 years, probably few years back in our clinical meeting. This was an almost six months old child and BCGOSIS is also one of the presentations of severe combined immunodeficiency. Friends, what I wanted to share with you that these type of the cases are not probably uncommon in our practice. We put the septicemia, we go for the piperacillin and tazobactam, vancomycin, meropenem, beyond that, ultimately say that unfortunately we lost the children. I think we'll have to come out from this circle. Something probably which we are diagnosed if we don't have the sufficient evidences. Even if you fail to manage the patient with efficient antibiotics, think beyond that. And the way even which I want to convey to indirectly that some of the friends which we are talking, talking regarding the less pediatric practice, I think open the other directions. Many more directions are there. And probably this is one of them. <clears throat> what are the 10 warning signs where you should suspect the primary immunodeficiency which European Society of Immunodeficiency group has given to us? And then I am sure that you know many, many more such patients are coming. More than four times new year infections in a year. More than two times serious sinus infections in a year. Two or more months of the antibiotic with even the little effect. Give the concession to our, I will say, method of practice. We will have to consider. Two or more episodes of pneumonia. Failure to thrive. Recurrent deep skin or the organ abscesses. Why the child there with the liver abscess? I think that should be the question. And that to second time. Believe me, in the last six months, we have got four patients of immunodeficiency diagnosis in our GCS Medical College. With long, long, I will say, files and histories and everything. What I want to convey is, yes, these problems are there with us. Persistent thrush and need of IV antibiotics and deep-seated infections and even the family history, which already was there in one of my, our first patients. Friends, even one more, this far, I remember this mnemonic given by Dr. Bala, that if he, any infection is severe infection, persistent or uncommon opportunistic or recurrent, if your infection is having any of these adjectives, think for the immunodeficiency disorder. Friends, when you are coming to the severe combined immunodeficiency disorder, some information, First time it was reported in just recently, 1950, by Swiss pediatrician Glensman, the same Glensman disease in hematology and the Rinica. In India, it was first diagnosed in 1970. 
and skid is characterized by impact T cell development with an effect on the B and NK cells. Maybe either count in the form of the number or the functions. And incidence previously reported was 1 in 1 lakh. But now with our deeper understanding and facility available for the screening, particularly that is by the T cell receptor excision circle in our one spot which we take on the paper, on the same paper, for the newborn screening. Now the incidence has come down to almost 1 in the 58,000 live births. Almost similar incidents have been reported in India by scattered, but some reports are there. <coughs> Many, please remember that the, when the child is breastfed, full-term baby, birth weight good, why that baby is developing recurrent infection should be the first question to the clinician. Because most of these patients present in the four to six months age, when the maternal antibody coverage is gone down, they start to develop the problem. And I think that's the right time to understand that why the breastfed child, birth weight 2.8, 3 kg develops this problem. I think that's the point for the clinician to suspect. Because it's not going to be returned on some case paper or at least your X-ray or CT scan. And then recurrent diarrhea in a breastfed child, pneumonias, otitis media, sepsis, oral thrush, not thriving, or even the hypoplasia or absence of thymus, tonsils or lymph nodes. Once you suspect, examine for the particularly the RECL organs. Look for the tonsils. Young baby, look for the thymus either the sonographically or even the chest x-ray. And even try to palpate the lymph nodes which usually we are expecting that they should be present. Particularly the opportunistic infections in the absence of HIV, Nivosisri Jiroversi, Canada Albicans, even the viral, common viral, okay, but why the EBV, CMB, or even the adeno in the absence of this epidemic? BCG, which I was talking, you know, when we are getting the BCG, we do not know that this child is having the problem. And that child presents with the bcgosis only two conditions common to general pediatrician. Either the skid or second, Mendelian susceptibility of mycobacterial tuberculosis. And both the conditions in our Ahmedabad clinical meeting we have discussed, that means we do come across these patients. And of course, is with the rashi shipitus pridomagali that what we say GBHD may be the one of the presentations. Friends, these are the various uh, varieties or types of the severe combined immunodeficiency. At present, my job is to just to provide this superficial information and to sensitize, to think in for the practice. Then we can go in the details, is it typical or is it really some leaky or typical what they have classified or in the Omen syndrome. These are the main three varieties of severe combined immunodeficiency. Prevalence is, I was talking initially 1 into lakh, but now 1 into 58,000. And when the consanguinity is high, in India also, please don't underestimate. I think somebody was talking in the morning, is absolutely right. And that too in our South India. The consanguinity recently, I was reading one of the articles, almost 40%, more than 40% consanguinity is there. And with the consanguinity, incidence of all the diseases go up like this kid and that he has mentioned that the one in the even the 3000 also the incidence may be there with this consanguinity is high and that can be in the form of the variety of x-link or in the autosomal recessive as with the uh, consanguinity it can be and then some other varieties if they, they have defined the different variety with the x-link there may be thymic hypoplasia absence of tonsils and other things auto uh, particularly the autonomous this uh, uh, variety type as I was talking that comes the ADA that adenosine DMNS enzyme deficiency variety which I am talking that falls in this autosomal recessive group. <coughs> it's a rare but almost from the total numbers of the ski 15 to 20 percent variety falls in the ADA deficiency that was significant. Why I am coining this ADA group, 
because we are, now we have to offer to something as a part of the treatment and that has come across so therefore i think we should know the details of course how it creates the problem with the deficiency of the enzyme there are some metabolic substances they are having the effect on the lymphocyte and therefore in any cbc with this other clinical picture if you see that there is a lymphopenia define it exactly with the criteria and if it falls in that criteria that is another the strong point to suspect that this is possibility of the skid or any primary immunodeficiency disorder presentations all of us can all of us know that the multiple system involvement non specific symptoms but of course there will be a severe symptoms or that may be the with the opportunistic unusual organism that will be very common which i may not go in the details of recurrent severe infections respiratory symptoms failure to try skin infections fungal infections diarrhea and even the very important that uh, there may be by chance if you come across this skeletal problems that is i am looking like the rickety rosary but if it is not the rickets they say that consider that this change is due to the skid very simple but i am sure that if you are knowing once a while if you come across we will be able to catch that this is very important clue to suspect the condition various types of the condition very typical sometimes as i said in the early most even before the six months they present but maybe even the delayed variety even the sometimes older children also can come and even with the partial enzyme deficiency even adults can also present that's a different story yes now we have the diagnostic facility to get the ada enzyme estimation and deficiency even percentage wise deficiency partial deficiency with that we can confirm diagnostic criteria almost as it is given for any system they have derived some of them for the complete incomplete variety and some even the non specific variety also i may not go in the details it is very easily available and once you suspect probably open this page and you will get the criteria very important point you know that there is now the screening test are available we know that for our country even the priority conditions which are there for us we are not able to make it routine of course some of the states have started all of you must be aware state of goa is doing since more than 10 years state of kerala probably more than 5 to 7 years routinely all the children of that born in that state they are doing the this uh, newborn screening test may not be for all but i will say more five to seven which are the very important for us or common for us they are doing in our gcs medical college also with the help of one of the organizations we are doing since last two years and probably more than 4000 babies we have screened not it is not for the skid for other common conditions which i am talking but it is is relevant to this point i am talking to you probably we can include you in the skid if this technical facility is available even now you know initially i think very nice talk was given by dr narendra rathi few years back that initially we were not reading these pages of the inborn error of metabolism or immunodeficiency because we were not able to suspect any fat or suspect there were confirmation and treatment was the dream but now gradually with the development all the things are available to us treatment point of view immediately yes you can go for the enzyme replacement therapy that is ada that that is not at present available in our country but within the very short time they are expecting till you prepare the patient for the gene therapy or the bone marrow transplantation so that is there and whenever you can go for this that till you prepare the patient for the gene therapy or bone marrow transplantation if not possible only the even the gene therapy can be done and even this is the scenario of bone marrow transplantation our country concern to skid i am talking more than 2000 and that to that is the improvement in the pediatric bone marrow transplantation outcomes they claim that more than 67% this uh, overall outcome is good that i think it is a quite encouraging the point is which i wanted to share with this 15 20 minutes time 
that as a whole more than 430 now primary immunodeficiency disorder have been identified. If not all, common will have to be accustomed. And consider that nothing is, I will say, disease which is not probably existent in our country, what we used to say, that cow's male allergy is not our problem, immunodeficiency metabolic disorders are for only MD, MD examination. I think now it is not so. We should be aware, probably within the short time, the enzyme therapy for this condition also going to be available. I am sure that the friends must be aware, must be aware that for Gaucher's disease also in our country, this enzyme replacement therapy is there. Dr. Uh, Kabra and Shiva Kapoor, I think in Delhi, they have the experience of some of the patients for the enzyme replacement therapy for the Gaucher also. And probably within the short time for the skid particularly, adenosine DMNS deficiency also will be having. Thank you very much. Once again, I would like to thank the organizers for giving this opportunity. I hope that I have not crossed the time. Thank, thank you very you much. So very much.